In this video, I would like to teach you how to find the zeros of a function and to give the multiplicity of each zero. So here we have a function x plus 2 cubed uh, multiplied by x minus 3 squared. So the first thing is we have to make sure we have this in factored form. In other words, you should have a discrete factor here and then another discrete factor here. Basically, where you have two things, you can call this, you know, A multiplied by B. Where you have two or more things, it could be also multiplied by some C, multiplied by D. But you have to have something here where you have discrete units being multiplied uh, by one another. Okay, that's basically factored form. Uh, now from here, what we can do is we can kind of remember that to find the zeros, okay, by the way, I have 20 some odd videos on problems just identifying how to find zeros. So I'm going to kind of run through this, uh, check just in this playlist, uh, you can go back a few problems and, and you will find them. Um, so remember to find the zeros. We want to locate the uh, we want to locate or identify the x value here that will make this term go to zero. Okay, so basically I'm going to write x plus two squared, uh, excuse me, cubed somehow has to equal zero, and then I'm going to set the other one equal to zero as well. Why do we do this? It's all explained in those videos, all twenty of them. So check out any one of them. All right. Okay, so what we want to do is solve for x here. So what we need to do is take the cube root for this one of either side first. And that way we get rid of the cube, all right, there. So that's just going to be x plus 2. And then the cube root of 0 is obviously just 0, meaning, in other words, you're asking yourself, what multiplied by itself three times would equal 0? And obviously that's 0. And then you're just going to minus 2 on to both sides, so x is going to be equal to negative 2. All right, so that's one of the zeros. You can approach this other side in the exact same way. Instead, in this case, you're going to take the square root of both sides to get rid of the square. So this is just x minus 3 be equal to 0. And then x is going to be equal to now 3. Okay, so these two values are now the zeros, right? Where x is negative 2 and x is going to be positive 3. And uh, let's put these on over to the side. And now why don't we look at a graph uh, quickly, right? I'm going to erase this work. And let's take out your graphing calculator, okay? And... Let's plug in the function now. So go to y equals, and then all you're going to do is open parentheses, x plus 2, x plus 2, close those parentheses, raise it to the third power, hit the over button, and drop it down, open the parentheses again, and then it's just going to be x minus 3. Okay, close those parentheses and square it. So hit your graph, and this is pretty good. I think I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to try to actually change my window to like 5, x values from 5 to 5, okay? So x min is going to be negative 5. And then let's go to x max of just 5. And then I'm going to hit graph. It'll just give me a little nicer of a picture. Now, obviously, um, you know, we don't see the whole graph. And we can kind of imagine what's going on that, you know, it's going to travel up here and then finally come down at a certain point, right? I don't know what happened to the line, but the line went somewhere. It's going to go up at a certain point and then come back down and then go back up, okay? But we don't really need that. What we're interested in is seeing what happens on this uh, x-axis. So if you notice, like we said, one of the x values should be negative 2, and that's where it should cross that x-axis. Okay, so that is a negative 2 value there for x. And here, this is a positive 3 value for x, and that's kind of what we said. All right, now, what we have to do here is we have to now identify the, the next step is then going to be to identify the multiplicities of each zero. Now, this can be simply memorized if you want. I don't suggest you memorize, though. I made a video. Check the link in the description below, below as to why the even multiple, uh, why the odd, I circled the odd, <laughs> why the odd multiplicities will give you uh, one type of uh, behavior and then why the even multiplicities will give you another type. All right. But basically now all we have to do, so for this zero, this x minus two value, this x minus two, okay, or this this not x minus 2, but this x equals minus 2, this 0 value, it had a multiplicity of 3. Now, why does it have a multiplicity of 3, or what does that even mean? It just means the power, okay, the exponential power of this factor. Remember, the uh, x minus 2 here was the result, or it was the 0. When x is going to be equal to negative 2, this whole thing goes to 0, okay? So the multiplicity of the x minus 2 value is going to be, I'll just write mult, of 3, all right, and then the x being equal to 3 value now is going to have a multiplicity mult being equal to now 2, all right, and if you notice this thing is odd, right, and this thing is even, and notice how the odd multiplicities, okay, uh, the odd multiplicities here will indeed cross that x-axis, do you see that? 
it crosses the x-axis, right? X is equal to minus two. So it's going to cross that x-axis there. And then for the even multiplicity here, it just touches, it never crosses. Right? It's just going to touch. All right. Now, why is that the case? Check out the link in the description to that video. I explain it all. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope that makes sense. And uh, I look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.